Good morning, Your Honor. David Moore, Dan Weissman, Chairman of the Staff, and Michael Moore. Uh, Your Honor, this is a case which, uh, up until a few moments ago, I thought we had resolved. Um, the situation is that after extensive negotiations with the State Attorney's Office, the State has agreed to reduce Mr. Moore's charge to assault a real uh, first degree misdemeanor brought down from the first degree felony for the last 30 years to a three year minimum mandate. That sentence would include a period of 12 months probation with the agreement that there would be early termination of the probation at the six month part upon the successful completion of all its terms and conditions. So we're going to guarantee six months in your off probation. Uh, Mr. Morrison uh, has been on uh, pre trial release since October of, last, of 2012, two and a half years. Never missed, never had a problem with their UAs. Uh, I've had extensive discussions with Mr. Morrison. Uh, my client has extensive medical and psychiatric issues. We, Mr. Lysi, myself, and Mr. Delgado have all tried to work with Mike recognizing those medical issues, which include post traumatic stress, panic attacks, diabetes, pancreatitis. He's uh, 100% disabled American, uh, United States veteran. He suffered during uh, his service. Uh, he is accused of pointing a gun. I know, I know the case. We had a hearing in. Yes. Well, to make a long story short, as I said to Mr. Morrison, and no disrespect to the I can't represent an individual who I can't reason rationally with. Um, I know that Mr. Morrison takes a considerable number of drugs for the constant pain that he had because of his service related injuries and other ailments that he suffered. Um, as late as yesterday, I thought we had an agreement to the plea. I thought my client had agreed to it. I now advise that he does not want to accept the plea offer. I have had discussions with him that if we are going to continue in a situation where he will not follow any of the advice given to counsel and he feels that I am not doing my job by not following his instructions, some of which are to take deposits of the witnesses whose deposits I don't want to take, or should I strategically attack the plea take? Um, and we're at an impasse. Mr. Morrison feels I'm not representing him properly. I know that if we were to go to trial, regardless of the circumstances, I would be facing a 3850. Um, and at, at this point, I'll let Mr. Morrison speak for himself. I think he can do it calmly and hoping. Um, and I'm going to ask the court to consider under these circumstances allowing my firm to withdraw. Um, we are simply at an impasse that we cannot help Mr. Morrison if he won't allow us to help him. I've asked him to announce that he would fire me. He's a, he refused to do that. Uh, i explained to him what a withdrawal is. He's indicated he doesn't object to that, but he won't fire me. So I'm kind of in this limbo state asking for relief from the court. I don't want to disparage Mr. Morrison. That's not what I'm here to do. I don't know whether his decision this morning is a result of medication or whether it's just a heartfelt belief in his part that he is not guilty and that he should not be enter any plea whatsoever he wants he's asserting his constitutional right to a trial which could ultimately uh, impose uh, on him a sense of up to 30 years but it isn't a question of taking this case to trial i take many cases to trial that are virtually unwilling uh, this is a situation where this is a case where we cannot agree on the trial strategy and that i know that mr morrison is not going to accept the trial strategy that i've offered him and that's why i'm asking all right, Mr. Morrison, do you wish to comment? You've come here many times complaining about Mr. Morrison. And, and I've told you to talk to him because you hired him. I, I didn't impose him on you, you hired him. Right? Thank you for recalling that. Oh, I remember, sure. It's been a long time. I've seen you out of the VA. I go out there myself. I know you're Vietnam. Well, not Europe, Vietnam veteran. I know that and I applaud it. But it's got nothing to do with what we're doing here. Now, right. Mr. Exactly. Well, what it has to do with why I'm here is I enlisted in the service for the right to be innocent and face my accuser. I asked Dave from the day we first met to take this, I want to take this to trial. I said I don't want to, I don't want to make a deal with the state because I'm not guilty. I am 100% not guilty of the charge. That charge me with being an asshole. I'll accept it. I'll say I'm, guilt, I'm guilty of that. That's not a crime. I know that. Otherwise, I know that's not a crime. So, so I'll, I'll admit to that. 
but I'm not guilty of pointing a weapon at these police officers. I've had a weapon since I was five years old. My grandfather gave me a first Don't talk about your case. So you want to go to trial, Mr. Mr. De you are with Mr. Divorce is. You hired him. Are you firing him? I would not fire him. He's a, he's a great lawyer. I want to tell you, I respect Dave and his crew. I, I respect him for everything. It's just that I asked him, what I asked him not to do is what he did. What I asked him to do, he hasn't done. He hasn't deposed any of my witnesses. Well, he has, he has an obligation to, uh, to negotiate with the state. That's part of the job. Any lawyer does that. But, you know, he also has an obligation to act in what he feels is his best, use his best professional judgment to represent any, you or any other client. He gave me this deal yesterday. Just a few hours after I had two teeth pulled, my head is still clotted with the medication that the, that the, the dentist injected in me. I haven't had a chance to digest what the whole thing is. And I'm sure that there's parts of that agreement. I mean, I'm glad to hear that the state is finally agreeing that there was no gun and they are turning this to a misdemeanor. Well, I don't know anything about that. Well, so, I was just saying. They, if you want some time problem. to think about it, I'll give you until Monday morning. Well, if, that, if that's what it takes. Because, in, in, you know, I see, I've been on the bench, uh, well, May 1st will be 15 years. And, and in the big picture, the big picture that I've seen thousands and thousands, literally, that's no joke, thousands of cases, this is a very good deal. Don't think your service goes without respect well, I, for me. You know, it, it's not about me. Saying. It's not about me. It's about you. I understand. But, that. You know, uh, when I told the lady before, you know, it's a risk reward analysis. It's like life, you know. Uh, all of life is, uh, is a risk reward. And like I told my attorney, I'm telling the truth. I will risk going to re the rest of my life spending it in prison for the truth. Well, that these cops, it, these that cops are lies to me. <laughs> That, 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 that makes no sense to me. As we just I, seen, I would do that. As we just seen, the police officer they got shot by his buddy, and cops from all over the state and out of state came to his funeral. They're, the cops have a thin blue line that they walk. One cop lied, the next cop lied to, to cover his mistakes. They broke into my house. They armed a home invade me. They kicked my window in at 1.30 in the morning, shot me in the back at 3 o'clock in the morning with no reason to be at my house. These cops need to be going to jail. Well, sir, remember, I was here when we had the uh, so-called standing ground motion. So I heard the evidence. Yeah. I never shot my pistol. I never shot my weapon. I don't think you're charged with that. No, I'm charged with point. I never pointed my weapon at a cop. Yeah, I never okay. pointed my weapon at anybody in my entire life. That, that's, that's a matter for another day. The, the question is now, there's a couple of questions. You're telling me that you want to accept this plea, which is... You know, I'll say it's an excellent deal for you. No, no, it's an excellent you don't deal want, for Fox. You don't want to accept it, you don't have to accept it. Right. And I, I would add parenthetically that uh, if you're, uh, if you feel that way, uh, you know, this is a criminal proceeding. We have a, a, a parallel system, civil system. You're always free to, uh, the statute of limitations, I think, it's four years. It's been a while since I did that. You have the option, if you wish, to bring a civil action for anything you want. I was told that I can't do that until criminal was That's cases. not true. That's well, not true. I've been lied to by my counsel. Now. That's not true. I'm you, can, you can, but it's not a good idea because you'd have to testify. You know, in a civil case, Look, I don't mind like telling the truth. Well, the cop told my lies anyway. Anyway, I'm not going into that. But, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to give you the Monday morning. I want everybody here Monday morning, and uh, I'm going to do my best to get a backup judge here. I had this murder case, you see. Um, but, you know, if you're still you know, the thought of having teeth pulled and stuff, just be cautious. But, you know, if you're still under medication, you really ought to wait till you're not to make a, a rational decision about it. And I believe that's a good, that's good advice. You, you're right. Well, I, I, I can't give advice. It's well, just okay. a, what, what you're saying is true. Yeah. I mean, whoever says it. You know? So uh, I'll see you Monday morning at 8.30. Can I just say, okay, that, that's fine. I mean, I'll obviously be fine keeping the plea off open. I, I thought we had a reached a uh, plea agreement. If we don't, he has rights to trouble. But could we say if it's not Monday, can we push this to the next trouble? Yes, is, yes, you know? we can do that. And I'll deal with Mr. Uh, Morris' concerns with that. Okay, okay, thank you, Arnold. But you really ought to think about that, Mr. Morris. Because, because if you're convicted, 
And as I mentioned to the lady before this morning, you know, the qualifications for jurors are what? You heard me say it, didn't you? I don't think so. I was, I was outside. outside. Well, if you want to be a jury, you have to have a driver's license, which I have, or an ID card. So those people who can't get a driver's license can get an ID card, and then you can be a juror in the state of Florida. Your Honor, I've been to jury selection, and I was one of the guys they, they talked to, and I know that the incompetent idiocy of some of the people who they question. Well, I would never say that, but that's, <laughs> that's an interesting observation. In any event, uh, so I'll see you Monday morning at 8.30. I'm looking forward to it. No, no, you won't be here, but I'll be here. Yeah, I'll be here. Oh, I thought you said you were going to get a, a, another judge fell in for it. Well, no, I, I, I'm trying to get a, a backup judge because I have this a murder case going to last all week. We're not done here with Dr. Sam. Judge, may I just I was add like one thing? And, and I appreciate the patience of the court. There may be an impasse here that we can overcome. I want to put it on the record. Would the state consider a reduction of his charge to misdemeanor court if there was an agreement that Mr. Morris would enter a plea in front of a different judge, possibly on a misdemeanor, the same misdemeanor we negotiate? Is that something Mr. Morris and you indicated? I would, I would consider that, and again, I'm still... Okay. Well, well, I don't make any difference if he's pleading to a misdemeanor. It makes no difference whatsoever. Ra rationality is not an issue in, in this respect. Okay. Well, just trying to find some commonality that Mr. Morris and can see. Why don't you guys talk about that? Can we talk do that, guys? Huh? Can we, is that something we can do? Yes. Okay. We'll talk Monday morning. I'll see you Monday morning. Thank you. Everybody. Have a nice weekend, John. Thank yeah. you very much for your consideration. Alan Ford. Yes. 2014-305-218.